Hey ladies, welcome to WTF, Women Talking Frankly, a running conversation with your hosts, Kyle and Candace. And you, about issues facing women, such as health, hormones, our looks, our libido, life, and anything in between. We promise to dig deep and get into it each episode. Welcome. We're so glad you joined us today. So, Kenna, in your book, you say that you propose a new definition of the feminine life cycle. So to replace the three bloods that we were just mentioning and the three M's um, to be replaced by love, faith and service, which are the elements of every woman's life, regardless of her socioeconomic status her ethnic heritage or educational level, her medical history or stress level or her age. Tell us. Talk to us more about your your new definition of the femin- feminine life cycle. Yes. So in my years and years of caring for patients in different corners of the world, and I found these things to ring true, that women are motivated, tremendously motivated by love. Uh, they may not make a lifestyle change or behavioral change, on behalf of themselves, they may not be so comfortable with self-love, but wow, on behalf of uh, their partner, the spouse, the kiddos, their mother, their sister, their friend, they will do it. Uh, love is, is such a mighty, mighty force to tap into. And so I, I say, let's tap into that. Um, not just romantic love, but love of a cause. It can be love for the environment. It can mm-hmm. be um, love for a vocation, an avocation. And the second is faith, not just a religious or spiritual type of faith, but I'm talking about intuition, imagination, faith in yourself, faith in your abilities, faith in the future, having hope, and The third would be service. No matter where I am, if I'm in the jungle of Guatemala, after those women have worked hard all day, they are working again um, for some community gathering or helping with a young woman who's had a new baby or helping a family who's experienced the passing of a loved one. This tremendous service in, in ceremonies and in assisting and nurturing others, not for any type of remuneration, but just out of, out of devotion. And when women are in balance with those three, they seem to do well as far as the sense of well-being. Mm-hmm. And I would say the, the opposite of that is uh, what we might call fog. Um, so instead of faith, they're overcome with fear, just distraught with doubts and worries. And rather than love, it's feelings of guilt, of anger, of bitterness, of resentment. Uh, Women that have high hostility ratings are known to have just a lot of negative self-talk in their looming consciousness, just ongoing all the time, self-loathing. And then when someone does something nice, for them or, or gives them a, a, com- a compliment, they perceive that to be exploitative or manipulative. They have difficulty establishing relationships of trust. And then service, when service is out of balance, woman is just shackled with duty and obligation and she's doing these things with a clenched fist and gritted teeth. And there's just not joy in that. So helping them get to those three pillars of love, faith, and service. And then if you, imagine an equilateral triangle. So you have love. At the top, you have faith, intuition, imagination. And then on the third point is service. And let's take some numbers. So let's put a zero by love. Let's put a 30 at the top by faith. Let's put a 60 over here by service. And then let's come back to love again and put a nine. So it's a nine zero. So what do we know about three, six, nine? Those are really powerful numbers. When you study sacred geometry, you'll see that. Um, what do we, how long is our gestation period as, as humans? Nine months. Mm-hmm. And so that first zero to 30, we come into this world 
We don't know how to walk. We don't know how to talk. We don't know how to feed ourselves. We don't know how to climb a tree. We don't know how to ride a bicycle. Uh, We don't know how to zip a zipper. We learn those things. And then we go through our first puberty and menstruation happens and we start realizing that we're something outside of our mothers and our sisters and our grandmothers. We are our own being. And around 30, we're, we can say mature, mature physically, mature. We've matured emotionally. We've achieved a certain amount of independence financially, maybe in our first job or education. So then that 30 to 60 time frame, as we come down the equilateral triangle, 30 to 60, what's happening there? Starting a family, starting a career, uh, tremendous growth psychologically as we start to juggle all these tasks. So you have a full-time job and you got three kids at home and then mother-in-law moves in and then you get a puppy and then you're volunteering at the community center. But, you know, you love doing all of it and you're doing all of it. And, and you're starting to realize how to set boundaries and create goals. And then around 60, a lot of that winds down. The kids have moved on. Um, puppy's grown. Um, <laughs> things start to calm down as far as a lot of these external demands. And now you can go back internal again. And so the first part from zero to 30 is that physical growth, 30 to 60, strong psychological growth, and then 60 to 90, that is the time of the spirit. And this is a time we don't want to miss out when we can really tap into our spirituality in a way that we never had time for before, perhaps, to contemplate and reflect. And I had a patient recently say, well, you know, the M word, like I'm getting old. And I said, please don't say that. You are emerging You are rebirthing. I believe in the grandmother hypothesis. I've just been in the San Juan Islands with the orcas, and they're one of the few mammals like us that we hang around after reproduction. Like Kyle said, her parents lived into their mid-90s. She's planning to go. Candace said, I'm going to 100. Uh, One of my cousins just turned 98 yesterday, lives alone, drives, plays sports, cooks, tapped in, tuned in, alert, aware, living life. And isn't that what we want? Can Uh, I ask you? But again, that 60 to 90, we are speaking the truth again, just like we did as little girls. You know, before we got to be 12 to 15 and started wanting approval from others, we can start dialing back to that internal power, tapping into that intuition and speaking the truth and guiding others, using our words to bless others, to help them prosper, to help them heal. This, there's so much spiritual power in these, in in this the if you want to call them um, the the postmenopausal phase or uh, age of the guardian. But just like the orca grandmother, she runs the pod. Uh, we we can run our pods too if we don't spend our time trying to regress and go back. Which um, Fortunately, I see patients making mistakes in that and not following this timeline. And so then I'll just wrap up the image and and I want Kyle and Candace to share more. But inside this equilateral triangle, I want you to immer- imagine a spiral shape. So it starts, the little curly part starts down there at the zero to 90 point on love. And then the spiral comes and it touches all sides of that equilateral triangle. And that is a woman's soul or her psyche. It is the subconscious that can connect to the superconscious. It's the part of her that connects to her dream world, dream life. And it is the first shape that a child will draw. When you give a kid crayon, it's a spiral. Mm -hmm. They make that. It's almost like a nebula in our galaxy. And if we experience a beautiful painting or take in a scene in nature that is just invigorating to us and that picture stays in our mind, that is the soul psyche part of the feminine life cycle. And it's there. And so when she is 90 and maybe she's lost the capacity to walk, maybe she's lost the capacity to talk, but in those touch points, she can jump back to when she was an eight-year-old girl 
feeling the sunshine on her skin on a hot summer day and how good it felt to get a drink of water. And she can have those sensory experiences again and those moments of joy, even if she's in a nursing home. I've seen it. I've seen just women radiating tremendous power when they've lost all physical attributes. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to see and behold.